All right, ladies, let me paint you a picture of reality. You're working hard, chained to that desk every day. Or you're driving the wheels off your car, going to meetings, showings, the kids' practice, church, doctor's appointments, and school. And then you repeat that whole process every afternoon. Y'all want to set up a future for your kids. That's cool. That's totally admirable. But how's that going for you? Listen, ladies, adulting is hard. Like, really, really into the nitty-gritty part of life, hard. And I get it. Your kids need this. They need that. The house needs this. It needs that. Your husband, well, he needs this, that, and the other. But you, well, you'll worry about you later. Right now, you got to pay rent. You got to pay the mortgage. You got to pay the cell phone. You got to keep the cable and the internet on. You got to pay your student loans. You got to pay for the car payment. You got to start saving for tuition or you got to pay the private school tuition now. Then we've all got to eat. We've got to have some food on the table every night. We've got to have some fun on the weekends and we got to have some fellowship. I've been there, ladies. You're stretched too thin to sleep, much less build an empire for yourself and your future. So what are you going to do? You dream of freedom. You dream about long leisurely vacations. You dream about so many things that won't ever happen. Don't you? You aren't where you should be in life, are you? You checked off as many boxes as possible, but you're getting older and your window is shrinking. Healthcare is on the rise and you're just stuck. Nothing you are doing is working. And oh my gosh, ladies, I have been in your shoes. You don't have the cash flow you need and no one is around to save you from yourself. Well, listen up, because I'm not here to be a Debbie Downer. I'm here to tell you that it isn't too late. You don't need a large chunk of change or a trust fund to create a never ending supply of monthly cash flow. Now I'll tell you that it isn't always easy, but being broke is the only other option. Before we go too much further, let me tell you that my name is Whitney Nicely. I was born and raised in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I started flipping houses in 2009 with my parents. Well, that was fun and all, except I wanted to move a little bit faster than they did. So in 2014, I bought my own house or I bought a house, flipped it and sold it and made 25,000. I've also invested in chunks of land that bring me $250 a month to $2,000 a month. I am completely obsessed, not just with real estate, and I'm not completely obsessed with money, although it is nice to have money deposited in your account when you wake up in the mornings. I'm obsessed with freedom. You see, I get to go on every field trip with my stepkids. I get to go on a last minute vacation with my mom or my girlfriends. I get to spend a whole day on a Tuesday, trying out a new Pinterest recipe just because I want to. See, real estate has given me the freedom that you've been talking about and dreaming about. And this isn't the kind of real estate that they do on HGTV where it's all, you know, unicorns and rainbows and everything's fine and they've got this great huge safety net. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about real real estate. I'm talking about the reality of real estate. I'm talking, you know, kind of like those guys that you go to the conference and they get you in there and they're standing up front and they're in their ugly tweed suit and they want you to run to the back so you can max out your credit card and then max it out again the next month when they wave that next carrot in front of your face. See, I'm not like either one of those people. I'm Whitney Nosley. I am a real estate rock star and I am on a mission to enhance the lives of as many women across the country as I can through real estate investments.
Listen, ladies, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you've ever been married or you've ever thought about getting married, at some point or another, the D word came up because it happens to 50% of couples in America. Every other couple that gets married is going to get divorced. That's statistics. And I know it's not going to happen to you. And I know that it would be a terrible situation if it did ever happen to you. And I hope and pray that it doesn't. But let's for a second, imagine that your husband is the primary breadwinner in the relationship. Even if you work, even if you have a part-time job, even if you have a full-time job, if he makes more than you do, your job Well, if your husband makes more than you do, we will call him the primary breadwinner. So if one day he up and decided that he wanted to go, I don't know, shack up with his secretary or go on a long cruise and never come back, what would you do for money? Are you really the kind of woman that wants to ask for an allowance every week from a man who doesn't love you, didn't respect you? What about your kids too? How can you make sure that he's going to pay the child support and he's going to pay the tuition and he's going to pay everything? And oh my gosh, can you just imagine the anxiety you're going to feel when you go to that mailbox every day after he leaves? You check the mail, you've got attorney's fees, He's got attorney's fees. The mortgage still has to be paid. The lights still have to be turned on. And you're in the lurch here. What are you going to do? Wouldn't it be nice if you had a real estate portfolio set up just for emergency situations? So that you know no matter what happens, you're going to be bringing in $2,000, $5,000, or $10,000 every month just because you made the right choice in real estate. And this doesn't just have to be about divorce, y'all. What if your husband passes away suddenly? Yeah, I know you got life insurance on him, but how long will that last? Are you employable? If you've been a stay-at-home mom, are you going to get a real estate license and start making nothing while somebody else raises your kids? Is that the kind of life you want? No. Your mama raised you to be a strong, independent woman. And I want to train you to be a strong, independent woman. I know I have a plan. I can catch you up while you've been fiddle farting around for the last 20 or 30 years. I know how to get you into some deals that will catch you up to where you should have been. And I can do that. I can show you how to do that. I can help you. I can guide you. I can get you into that real estate portfolio that you want so that you have that mailbox money long into your retirement. Because your other choice is to work. Have you been working your whole life so that you can just keep working until you die? <laughs> that doesn't sound like the Golden Girls to me. <laughs> no. You need to put a plan into place now, yesterday, so that you can still retire on time. You know. When you're 52, you can start retiring. When you're 45, you can look at your retirement and say, yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and retire. Retirement is real. And what happens when you retire, you don't go to work anymore. You don't clock in anymore. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? But if you don't go to work and you don't clock in, 
you don't get paid. And I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but our country is kind of effed up and the likelihood that social security checks will still be given out by the time I get to retirement is not very high. In fact, it's like a, a 0% chance. So I'm not counting on a social security check. I'm building myself right now so that I can retire when I want to. Not when the state says I've got enough time in. Not when my boss says I've got enough time in. Not when, you know, I've hit some magical number on my QuickBooks program and my accountant says I can retire now. No. I can retire whenever I want to because I have enough money coming in every month to support my lifestyle the way I want to live, to support the health care that I'm going to need when I'm older. And I'm not talking about living in those, you know, 10 by 10 block room kind of nursing homes. Oh no, y'all, I'm going to be in the fancy nursing home. And I want you right there beside me because the other choice is if you don't save up for retirement, if you don't save up for your old age, either your kids are going to have to move into your house because they didn't have the brains to figure out life and to buy their own house and to be successful people. So they are still living in your basement or if they are good, successful people, when you're a little old lady, you're going to have to move into your kid's house, which is fine. But you know, and I know that after a week on vacation with your daughter-in-law, you're ready to claw her eyes out. <laughs> Take care of yourself, ladies. Set yourself up to be financially free. And I mean really financially free. Get that cash flow system in place. I'm going to tell you a story. This is a very personal story to me. This was a terrible situation. It was probably one of the worst hours of my life. I got a call late one night that my brother had been in a motorcycle accident. And you know, if you get a call late at night, your stomach already drops. You know something bad's wrong. People don't usually call to say, hey, what's up at a certain time of night. So when I answered that phone, I knew something was wrong. They told me which hospital he was going to, and I was dressing out the door almost to the interstate in like 30 seconds. I mean, I, I broke land speed records getting dressed and trying to get out of my house. Thank God, by the, night, by the time that night was over, my brother's motorcycle was totaled, but he only had a broken nose, a, a, a broken pinky, and about a hundred stitches. But y'all, my brother was alive. This could have been the worst night, the worst week, the worst month, the worst year of my life. And in that hour that I didn't know if he was alive or he was dead, I would have sold any of my worldly possessions to help him, to take the hurt away from him, to fund his helicopter ride, his medical expenses, to make his mortgage payment for the next six months if he was out of a job, I would have done anything to take care of my loved one at that moment. And again, thank God, you know, he could have broken his pinky, his nose, and got a bunch of stitches in a bar fight. But I mean, this, <laughs> this was a pretty serious ordeal, but thank God, that's all that was wrong with him. But when you get that late night call and you're rushed off to the hospital to see your loved one, are you able to do anything besides pray? Are you set up financially that you can sell one of your houses to pay for his hospital bill if the insurance doesn't cover it or the other driver didn't have insurance? Or are you going to have to watch your brother 
file bankruptcy and lose everything he's worked for his whole life because he's in the hospital on life support for a long time and the other person didn't have insurance or didn't have enough insurance. It's a scary world that we're living in, y'all. And you have to protect yourself. You have to protect those that you love. What if that had been my husband or my kids? What if that had been your husband or your kids? What would you have done? If the only house you would have had is one that you rent. Or the only house that you own is the one that you live in, your primary house. Are you going to sell the house to pay the medical bills? Are you going to sell your car? Because that won't even put a dent in it. You have to think about these things, ladies. You have to think about what you would do if the worst happened. Can you afford for the worst could to happen? Do you know how much it costs just to die? I saw a commercial on TV the other night. The average funeral cost $15,000. Do you have $15,000 to put yourself in a hole in the ground? Or is your family going to have to go get a loan to bury you properly? So not only did your family lose you, but now they literally have to go in the financial hole when you went in the real hole. Is that what you want? No, that's not what you want. You want to know that if something happens to you, you will be taken care of. Your family will be taken care of. You want to know that you have houses, you have properties, you have land, that when your kids become of age, you can gift them that house. So instead of you starting when you're 35 or 40 or 45 years old, your kid will have a jump start on life because you have trained them to be a real estate investor since they were 18 years old. How much different would your life look like if you had started investing in real estate when you were 18? If your mama had taken you by the hand, like my mama did me, to every auction on a Saturday that we could make it to. My mama drug me through stick houses, under construction houses, and she would teach me how to read the pipes before they put the sheetrock up on the wall so I could tell where the bathrooms were going, I could tell where the kitchen was gonna be. My mom taught me that. Most women can't do that. And you're not gonna be able to teach your kids unless you learn from me. I'm here to help you help you but I'm also here to help you help your future, create your generational wealth, create your living legacy, create the lifestyle that you want and that you really want your kids to have. Do you want your kids to grow up, get student loans, get a job they hate and suffer for the rest of their life? No, you don't want that for your kids. You don't want that call in the middle of the night and you don't have anything to contribute. If you are ready to climb over this mountain, to get out of this rut, to start living your dream life now instead of in 20 years, I want you to fill out the application on allaboutrei.com. We'll set up a call and I'll talk to you for about 30 minutes to see how I can help you get into real estate. Every woman needs a real estate portfolio for all the reasons I've mentioned, but it all boils down to these two things. 
we're gonna live longer than our men. We're gonna live longer than our mates. There's a chance we could outlive our kids. But we have to have enough money outlive us instead of us outliving our money. And the second reason is because women spend more money than men. Women spend more money throughout our lifetime. We make less, we save less, but we spend more. The only way to make that work in your favor is to have a real estate portfolio supporting your buying habits. Go to allaboutrei.com, fill out the application, or click on the link below this video. It'll take you straight to the application, get it filled out, submit it to me. We'll get on the phone just as soon as possible and get you towards the path that you need to be on.